Okay, today what we're going to be looking at is going to be uh, pathologies uh, related to the large intestine. Okay, so um, the first one we're going to look at is going to be the uh, inflammatory bowel diseases. Uh, so uh, hyphen um, with the acronym IBD. Uh, we have two major ones. The first one is going to be ulcerative colitis. And the other um, inflammatory bowel disease is going to be uh, Crohn's disease. Uh, both of these appear to be autoimmune uh, diseases. Um, just so if I can highlight some major differences uh, amongst the two diseases. Uh, ulcerative colitis is uh, primarily going to be associated with the colon and rectum. Whereas Crohn's disease, it can be in any area of the GIT and actually it has a uh, type of skip where it skips across different areas and actually there's a good diagram here that can highlight the differences. So as you can see, um, ulcerative colitis primarily affects this area right here whereas in um, old Crohn's you have skip lesions. And it could be anywhere from the esophagus to the anus, so the, throughout the whole GIT. However, it's most common in the ileum, uh, ileocecal area, and in the cecum. So this area right here is the most common uh, with regards to Crohn's disease. Um, the other thing is going to be the type of um, damage to the uh, colon wall. Uh, with um, ulcerative colitis, uh, you have damage to the mucosa and the submucosa where and so if you see here it's going to be damaged there and there so this is going to be and this is why you get the broad base ulcer and also you have these pseudo polyps that form they're called pseudo because it's not polyps generally are raised lesions but in this one the polyp is formed be, not because it's been raised up but because everything around it has been raised down and if you see in Crohn's it goes all the way through so this is transmural transmural type of inflammation um, that you get. Now, um, just let's, let's start looking at the symptoms now. In ulcerative colitis, uh, generally patient presents with uh, bloody diarrhea and of course abdominal pain uh, because of the... Now interestingly enough, we do have extra, some extra intestinal symptoms um, that are related. Uh, one of them is going to be the mig migratory polyarthritis. Um, you also can get uh, sacroiliitis, and if you notice, these are all inflammatory uh, ankylosing spondylitis. So, ank spondylitis, uh, uveitis. Uh, you can get some skin lesions. Uh, so there, and, and on and on. And actually, uh, with Crohn's disease, uh, the symptoms. Um, you're going to get abdominal pain and diarrhea, the same as here, but it's also going to be associated with fever, uh, and you're going to get a right lower quadrant pain, uh, which obviously has to be di differentiated from appendicitis and Meckel's diverticulum. Um, also, with uh, the extra, uh, the extra uh, uh, intestinal symptoms are the same here and here, but plus you can also get anemia uh, because this area is where you absorb iron and also you absorb B12. So you get iron deficiency anemia and even megaloblastic anemia as well. Um, and of course, iron deficiency anemia can lead to clubbing, which is another uh, thing you don't get. So um, let's look at the morphology of both of these. Uh, in ulcerative colitis, of course, we're going to get the pseudopulps that we talked about earlier uh, and the broad-based ulcers. Um, one thing you can get is constant damage to the... Uh, muscularis propria can lead to toxic megacolon and we're going to talk about that in more detail when we talk about Hirschsprungs. Um, whereas here, uh, morphologically, uh, you can get um, uh, you can get uh, strictures like we've already talked about and you can see right here these scripture, scriptures and the, then you can get creeping fats where the fat from the mesentery actually starts creeping upwards, and I can show that uh, really nicely with this. 
So what you can see is this is um, this is the mesenteric fat right here, and it should kind of just be where this is, but this is going it's moving up around the uh, colon area. So that's a creeping fat um, that you can get. Um, the other thing that you can uh, get here is called the um, string sign. And this is a radiographical uh, type. And basically, that's just basically seeing the strictures on a radiograph. So um, these strictures right here, uh, they can, they can kind of start to look like this. So if you see this right here, if you can see that, it's a, it's a string. And that's basically the strictures that are formed uh, because of the uh, problems here. Now, complications, of course, the complication here is going to be toxic megacolon. And it can also lead to uh, colon cancer. Um, here you can you do have a little bit different complications um, because it can go all the way through it can go transmural uh, one of the problems here is going to be fistulas so you do kind of get fistula problems and of course this can also lead to uh, colon cancer uh, treatment um, here we can use uh, sulfasalazine uh, which is basically an aspirin, uh, uh, which doesn't get um, become effective until it goes into the actual colon um, due to bacteria breaking it down. And then you have in, you can also use infliximab, which is a TNF alpha blocker uh, antibody, and you can do uh, six mucaptopurine, and uh, you can also do a colectomy uh, when it's, when it's you know no longer responsive to treatment, and with um, Crohn's, basically the mainstay of treatment is corticosteroids, uh, anything that kind of suppresses the immune system, such as methotrexate, um, uh, azathioprine, and also infliximab. So that's uh, all you have there. Um, the other condition that we're going to want to look at real quickly is going to be uh, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, this is primarily a clinical uh, syndrome, and we don't really understand the uh, we don't really understand the pathogenesis uh, completely. And so, how do you know if you have uh, irritable bowel syndrome? Well, if you have any of these, um, any change in stool frequency, uh, any change in appearance. And if there is uh, any, uh, if the pain uh, is relieved with defecation, so these are generally uh, what you get. And um, basically, the patient is going to present with, you know, bouts of diarrhea and then, you know, bouts of constipation. Um, and they think it's it most likely, you know, they think it's going to be some sort of uh, uh, psychological uh, issue going on. Um, so that's pretty much with uh, IBS. And finally, we're going to start talking about Hirschsprung's. Hirschsprung disease is going to be um, basically a failure of the uh, neurocrest cells to go from the cecum to the rectum. And so what you have is you have no Meisner's or our back. So if you have no misers in our back, obviously, what does that mean? There's no contraction. Uh, and so since it cannot contract, uh, the fecal matter gets, you know, kind of clogged up uh, behind it, and um, it's going to start getting becoming bigger and bigger. And so what we're worried about here is going to be you can it can lead to enterocolitis. Uh, it can lead to uh, the toxic megacolon. And of course, if it ruptures, it can lead to peritonitis. And real quick, just a quick diagram. Of Hirschsprungs. So you can see here, um, this area is where it's dilated. Here there are nerves here, but this is the area where there's no nerves. Everything is caught up right here, and it's going to constantly try to uh, contract, but it can't contract because there's nothing contracting here and it just can't move anymore. Um, and let's, let's take a look at this toxic megacolon as well. 
on radiograph. So here you can see the toxic mechacolon. The outline of the colon, this is a transverse colon, is out here. And what are some other causes of a toxic mechacolon? One is going to be Chagas. Uh, the other is going to be, obviously, we're going to have ulcerative colitis and Hirschsprung. It can also be caused by an obstruction. So if you get a neoplasm, like, you know, somewhere here, that's going to clog everything up and therefore nothing can work. Any type of visceral my, uh, myopathy which affects the muscles. And actually, uh, before I end, um, one thing we also need to look at is in Crohn's disease, you get something, morphologically, you get something called a cobblestone look. And that one, if I have an image of it here. So here you can see how you have all these like round uh, raised lesions and that's going to be Crohn's.